And so I ran back, so I'm also flushed, uh, which might make it look like I'm roused, but no. But I will be in a second because Jessica Foster Q will be joining us. Hashtag not appropriate. Hashtag me too. Hashtag Jess and I work together. Right. Let me bring Jess in. And we're going live. She'll be here any second now. It's just like real telly. <laughs> Only not. Hey, Jessica Hello. Foster Q. Hello, How Beth. are you? Oh, very up and down. Uh, it's, it's, uh, well, the other day I was saying to Susie Wacomer, I'm both bleak and hysterical, and she coined bleak hysterical, and I feel that's my main state, is bleak hysterical. Yeah, I, um, I'm just, I've, I've, I'm always very up and down in, in, in the old normal, before it was the new normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that times a million, mate. The fragility of my mood, it's not, it's not like, oh, you know, I've had a good day, or whatever it's hour by hour hour by hour indeed yeah. i've had a really you know i've had a day where i felt i mean what's a good day now really weird but mm. you know a productive day where i feel like it's positive and this i believe in the end of this and look at all the things i can get done and look at all the causes that i can support and i can feel really positive and then yeah. suddenly something will happen or nothing will happen and i'll find myself sitting in a chair weeping yeah yeah yeah, yeah. totally yeah, and often it's kindness, isn't it, that f flips you out. I just watched, I'm, I'm not spending much time on social media, but I just watched someone's video of um, their kid's birthday got cancelled, obviously, and, um, and their little kid was stood in their doorway while the whole street sang happy birthday to her. And she was crying, and I was like... Yeah. <laughs> See, it's then, tech yeah. failure that makes me flip out. Um, I did a... <laughs> really flip out it's the most <laughs> it's the most today i did one of these with susie wacoma at lunchtime yeah. because to make up mm. for the fact her tech had failed last time right. and at the end i thought it was off but it wasn't off so everyone could hear me shouting well it was not even gonna say what's the fucking point jesus christ tom yeah. you said this was okay and then tom said are you still on and i went no and he went you are and apparently people were, people were saying should we just go and it, like we're now in Deborah and Tom's domestic argument. I mean, it was very, it was very affectionate. It wasn't like I wasn't sort of going, you know. We, it's it just sort of when I get high pitched about tech, it's our it's our way. <laughs> when I get high pitched about tech, high frequency. He's been so good though. I can't complain about Tom at the moment. I'd, and, I, and, I, and I'd like to because it would be an outlet, but I can't because he's been very no. good. How's Rudy been? Um. <laughs> Rudy, in case you don't know and you're watching, is Jessica's four-year-old, not her partner, just to be very clear, because I've been talking about my partner, so it might sound like, how's Rudy been? Well, we're yeah, on the no, well, it's, who we're, it's who we're isolating with, isn't it? It's who we're locked down with. I'm locked down with a very sexist four-year-old. Um, he has been taking a while to get his head around this but i mean oh, who has to laugh but also i mean he's it's just very arrogant and likes arguing so but he's kind of i know i've um rinsed a lot of comedy out of um what you a have. violent two and three-year-old he is and um was and um and actually I, I, in real life i thought i was out of the woods for that for, yeah. for a good six months now nearly a year actually he's been he's kept his violence verbal and you know, like an adult would. Yeah. Uh, um, but, um, no, he's gone right back to square one on that, and all he wants to do is jump in on my head and fight in and punch in and kick in. So, I mean, it's a test. It's a, <laughs> it's a test. On oh, the, yeah. in, in the good hours, I think. Oh, you know, you know, when you're like looking at everything really positively, I'll be like, well, actually, you know, this is the most concentrated time I'll ever have with him. That's got mm -hmm. to be good for both of us. Um, but it's as hard as it is good, actually, because I don't think any two people um, are meant to be... Quarantined. Um, <laughs> no. No, you it's not a normal psyche. In the world, and you can be, you know, a parent and child who would, who would kill or die for each other. Um, but you're not meant to be in each other's face the whole time. I mean, that's... It's no. not right. <laughs> it really isn't. Somebody here, Run Baker Girl says, uh, or Run Baker Girl says... I have four-year-old twins, send help and rum. It's getting a bit of Hunger Games. 
<laughs> Listen, <laughs> Ron Baker. We've got to get to the point. We've just got to let them go. Let I, them go at each other. Run Baker, each other, not just you as a punch bag. Yeah, may the odds be ever in your favour, Run Baker. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, if you if you need a tribute, one of them's going to have to step up. <laughs> Br brutal deaths. I mean, I, brutal I, times. I, be, there'll be times where I think, oh, I'm I'm very level today. Like I feel very sort of level. Like I'm computing everything in a really, um, you know, in the, in a very sane way. And then yes. I'll find myself irritated by just somebody being slightly too positive about things. Oh, yes. That's when you know you've gone down a hole for a few hours when just somebody being a bit balanced about something is like, no! <laughs> somebody here, she'll t uh, Laura will cheer you up then. She says, it's just me and the dog and he's getting very sick of the sight of me. <laughs> oh. uh, um, so I'm going to ask you some new yeah. normal questions. Let's play It's the New Normal. That's not the branding. Uh, <laughs> Can I just show you? Because I've dressed up for you oh, and put wow. a necklace on that my girlfriend got me and, um, oh. and earrings and makeup and a shirt, but still Jim Jam trousers. Nice. Well, so that is very much the new normal. For this is, yeah. Um, the I, new normal I is tracky bottoms on. and a business shirt. Hmm? Yeah. I've actually put perfume on for this. Why have I done that? I think it's, it sort of lifts the spirits and makes you feel more professional. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, oh, someone says Deborah has got I the blurry thing the Susie had going for her. Just let me check in with Tom. One second, everybody. Right. Uh, I'm now going to call Tom, who's gone upstairs. Tom, yeah. uh, do you think that when I went into Steve's room, you're really seeing into it now. Do you think when I went into Steve's room and had to change the internet over, that it's still on that old internet because people are having trouble? Or do you think it'll have gone back? Shall I have a check? Um, could you busk, Jess, while I do this? Just read read some of the comments. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Someone's just shouting, Tom, Tom. They're just doing. I mean, that is that's going to be the hallmark of my. I think I think I'm getting. compliments for my shirt and J combo. I can't tell. Hello we'll need you to pick. Oh. Uh, and I'm back. And Seamless. You're back. And you're less blurry. That has sorted it. Yeah. I, I was on Steve's Wi-Fi. Steve's with friends in the country. So I'm using his room as my room of one's own so I can go to work um, <laughs> down the stairs. Uh, it, and uh, I, I, I switched Wi-Fi. This is fascinating. So let me ask you uh, for the next question. Has yes. this crisis, as it were, yeah. given you... You're on television, Jess. Uh, given you... <laughs> You're not meant to be even touching your face, much as oh, putting your okay. finger oh, in your mouth. Oh, very hands. I'm here on my own. <laughs> well, that's what I think now. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It's just me. I can't give it to myself from myself, can I? I don't think I'd so. I'd literally just scrub my mitts. I, th I, I don't really think so. take joy in washing my hands and then handling my face. I know. It's a, just a, it's a real night in now, isn't it? To just yeah. think, oh, my hands are so clean. I'll be able to do a light, nice face touching. Uh, yeah. Has this has this experience given you any new I'm a feminist parts, Jessica Foster Q? Yeah, it has. Um, as ever, they've come from the fact that I'm a feminist but I have created such a sexist child. Um, I, so I'm a feminist but I've created a boy who uh, is so arrogant he thinks he can see coronavirus. <laughs> How do you know he can't? You might have a superhero. Well, this is it. If it's true, I need to find out a lab to donate him to. Because so we were, we were doing our one walk yesterday. Yeah. And like the creature that he is, he touches everything we pass. Every fucking bollard, every fence, every oh, filthy God. car. Touch, touch, touch. And it's like, can you please stop it? 
and he was like, why, you know? And I was like, because the virus, we have to try and be a bit cleaner and touch some less things. And he was touching a bollard to wind me up because I'd asked him not to. And he went, this one hasn't got corona on. I know, because I can see it. And I said, well, wow. no one can see coronavirus. And he went, I can! And had a massive meltdown about how he could see coronavirus. And we got almost close to home. Two lovely police force came past genuinely clip-clopping <gasps> forces. I live in South East London. There's stables in them. Um, oh, my God. Really could be arrested. I know. So they were, well, wait to hear what he did. He genuinely did this, Debs. Um, these police clip-clop on horses. We stop so we can wave and look at the beautiful horses. My son genuinely starts dancing around a filthy pole, actually pole dancing around a, a paper <laughs> pole, genuinely singing, <laughs> I'm catching corona, I'm catching corona. <laughs> sort of these people... And afterwards, because they believed with their eyes, I was like, you don't know, this is not a joke. We've got to be more serious. This is not a joke. You don't touch things like that. He went, oh, it was an accident. <laughs> what, singing and dancing around a pole, singing I'm Catching Corona was an accident. And then, to amp honestly, you think that's as bad as it can get that he can see Corona. Later, Ed, we had a bath together, and he genuinely said to me, bad news, mummy. Um, I've just seen your tuppence, and it's got Corona on it. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that is bad news. Are you a hundred percent sure this child isn't isn't either a superhero or an evil genius? Because he does sound in that territory, and he could save the world. Yeah, I'm a hundred percent sure, Debs. Either that, <laughs> or my genitals are covered in coronavirus, but the rest of me is fine. <laughs> I mean. It's hard to know what to say to that. Most people's I'm a feminist, but so far have been things like, I'm a feminist, but I'm incredibly worried what will happen when my hair goes grey and I won't have anyone to dye it. And yours involved a tuppence and a corona and coronavirus. It's, it's yeah. not at all where I thought this was going to go. And no. I, it's my favourite one. Yeah! By a long, like, by a long I'm, shot. I'm, I'm having a non-alcoholic beer so that I can have the essence of fun, the taste of fun. Without I've any... got a Diet Coke, but I think after this, I might take the rest of the evening off. I don't think I can do any more. It's too much. I've, I, everyone else is sitting around saying, oh, I've just been to Danny McBeal. And I'm like, I've never been busier because I'm trying to work out how my old life work operates on a totally different plane. It's yeah. like I've just been, I've just gone into the good place, which is really the bad place. And now I have yeah. to work out the system. Yeah. And, and I'm a, me it's one of the things that's been annoying me too is people going like, oh God, well, I mean, who isn't free? Ask so-and-so to do so-and-so because who isn't free? And it's like, well, actually, uh, uh, I've got some massive deadlines. None of the things the government have announced so far apply to me that would help me in any way at all. So I have to keep working. So there is, I can't mm -hmm. just survive. I have to find a place of productivity for, yes. for some time every day. I've actually got to. Oh, completely. Um, we'll go broke. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but, uh, but, oh, just, yeah. Won't the yeah. freelancers, won't the freelance thing help you? 80% of the last, no. No, I'm not self-employed. I'm a tiny business of just uh. me. But I'm not successful enough to be VAT registered. I can't, even that 10 grand business interruption loan you can ask for, this is so boring. But that's like, that, that you have to apply to a bank first and be rejected uh. by the bank, I hadn't realised. And a bank, if they say yes, are going to give you huge interest rates. Also, I don't, want to borrow money if I don't have to. I'd rather keep working if I can, but equally what I meant was kind of people saying, oh, you know, there's really nothing to do. All we're mm. asking you to do is just sit still. It's like, uh, no. No, I'm, you have to work out how everything works. works. But there's, there's guilt involved in this. I bet you've had the same, but I get asked between 20, at least 20 times a day to do things for charity, which is great. And mm -hmm. I want to do as many of them as I can, but it's crushingly overwhelming. And then the guilt that comes in when you realise yeah. you can't reply to all of those. Yeah, I'm feeling that. Care, work, everything, whilst having... <sighs> my inbox and all my DMs, everything so full. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I feel so guilty not getting back to anybody during this crisis. But at the same time, I... I was, I think I'll send myself mad because I actually, not an inclusive word, uh, wild, spare. I uh, unhinged. Um, <laughs> ah, 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 um, can you say fat shit? Look if, if, look, if anyone wants to cancel me now, they just can because I just, <laughs> I'd be grateful to be honest. He's got some Ali McBeals to binge, guys. I'd be grateful to be cancelled this week because I could just go into my hole, turn Twitter off and have to. 
and just pull down the blinds and go to bed <laughs> by so knock himself job. out. Um, uh, so that's, th we've not got very far in our questions. Uh, the next question is, uh, what, I think we've sort of almost covered it. What are your coping strategies to be more, you know, to sort of find your emotional and mental stability? Um, um, have you found is... anything? Um, I, I, I'm, it's a constant learning curve, if I'm honest. I, I think it's genuinely a case of um, protecting myself from um, sort of unhelpful noise. And that includes actually... Um, even how much news I would consume, mm. I found that in the very in the very early days of this, when we were realising how serious it was, there was one day where I got a note. You know, a friend said there's going to be a big announcement. Two, two in the afternoon was when mm -hmm. his first Boris's first press conference was scheduled, um, and it didn't actually happen till half five. And I was on tour, and I sat watching television um, from two till half five. And actually, it wasn't the announcement that threw me, mm. but I was so fucked up waiting for an announcement. Oh, the waiting in front here. of doors and things like that yeah, and the yeah. anticipation it's not good for you so no and actually you know my brilliant shrink says that that kind of fear of things is going to really not great for immune systems either so i do oh, think yeah. there's, a genuine, there's a genuine physical mental health reason to not be watching the 24-hour rolling news but but don't, i'm not saying don't because we need people to be watching the news to be of knowing course. what they're doing but you know ultimately you know, uh, one of the things I've been doing to protect myself is being very careful, even more than usual, about the content I'm taking in, even mm -hmm. from types of friends or groups of friends, and, 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 and be, yeah, t ramping up the dial of that thing of going, right, how much can you achieve in a day well? And being yes. and right in yourself. And so it is going, well, there are going to be things I don't reply to, uh, maybe yeah. ever, uh, in the midst of all this. Um, um, and then also, in the same vein, I kind of think kind of protecting the people I love from me when I'm in a bad way, because I do, mm. I will go down a hole for a few hours, not every day, but quite, I did today. And, um, and it's mainly, you know, it's mainly my girlfriend and my mum who I but miss them both so much, but it's, I think it's just a case of trying to really be maximum self-aware and say to people, Oh, I, I'm in a, I'm in a terrible vortex for a couple of mm. hours. So I've got nothing useful or because I know how, how fragile everybody is because mm. uh, I know I've been fine you know, I've been absolutely fine and then you'll hear some sad news and then that's it you don't realize how much that's knocked you right back down so it's kind of I mean I'm not doing a great job of that and I will need to get better but literally kind of saying I'm not going to be in touch for a few hours but it's only so that I don't stick mm. you out with my minging vibes I just need to work my own <laughs> through this. A lovely death phrase. Do you know what that reminds me of is Yusuf, my friend Yusuf, who's a refugee, he wrote a piece for Scarlett Curtis's book, uh, It's Not Okay to Feel Blue and Other Lies. Mm. It's like a compendium. It's such a good book to get right now, actually. It's about anxiety and things. And I'm sure Scarlett Curtis will come on and do the show at some point. And she's certainly overly welcome. And he said in that, when he was displaced as a refugee, and he was only a teenager then, he's only 20 now, um, he said... Um, uh, you can't complain you're hungry, everyone's hungry. You can't complain you're cold, everyone's cold. You can't complain you're scared, everyone's scared. And yeah. I found that so poignant because he was a child and he was on his own, he was underage, you know. And I now, I really, really sort of, uh, I had empathy for that, but now I have experiential empathy for that where I go, I can't, I can't, like I can, I can you can check in with a friend and say, is it okay if I tell you how I'm feeling? But given yeah. everybody's in the middle of a global pandemic, there yeah. is nobody to to you can just project your trauma onto and say, will you catch this for a while? Yeah. And some of my friends, I think, have been, um, I've just noticed that all our neuroses have come up, have surfaced at the same time in weird ways where normally one person's going through a breakup, everyone else is stable. Oh, one person's having to move flat or have just had a big win or a big lose yeah and they're in a slightly altered state but everyone else is normal and i think we're all in an altered state and yeah. so we all have to be more but i've noticed i'm being patient i'm being not so much more patient and nicer to tom i mean not when mm. i was hysterical on the video but i'm so much quicker to go it's not your fault yeah be yeah, affectionate yeah. and warm and because there's because there's no one else you know I, I well, just from I've like... got to be kind to him. I've got to look after him. Not for myself, but I just mean also, I just feel for him and I, I want to be kind. But also there is no one else. As I said the other day, you know, the thing about being quarantined with your partner, Jess, is you can only legally storm out once a day. 
<laughs> I think as well, <laughs> it's so true. I mean, I think as well, just from a sort of comedian um, being even more mindful than usual, like there's been a few times where things have, I'd say tickled me or riled me or whatever in terms of things I'll have noticed. Um, uh, say on social media or maybe even like, I don't know, from from people's behaviour, mm. uh, friends, colleagues, whatever, or just people on social media where I think, ah, I want to do, uh, you know, I thought I've had an idea of a, an Instagram story I could do or, mm. um, you know, basically take, making comedy out of this thing or thing like this behavioural trend I've noticed and twice it's happened and I've got, don't do it because there are people you love who are doing the thing you're about to take the mickey mm. out of. Mm. And um, there's no reason why I can't write stand up about it in however many months and mm -hmm. do. But there's no, what is the point of even making one person sad when all they're doing is coping as best they can? Yes. So, so I'm, I'm being carefuler carefuler uh, than ever mm -hmm. um, of other people's feelings yeah i have taken the piss out of madonna in the bath with the roses to be, oh god be fair. i mean that's always going to be punching up isn't I it i don't mother. think she's going to see it um can i ask if you found any routine i'm presumably you have to have a bit because you've got a child so maybe your routine is weirdly similar but is there anything you've put in instead of x we now do y or or uh, have i made up that you have to have a routine because you've got a child does the child tip your routine upside down he's we've got more routine um more routine than we would have normally really because of the nature of my work um so i co-parent with my ex who and this is one of the things i am so enormously grateful for um lives five steps away oh uh, so we, we can are, quarantine we, with both parents yeah basically our that's our fantastic accounting as one home we both need to work, so we are we are swapping over after lunch every day. So effectively, we can always work definitely for half of the day. Or you know, if there comes a day where we can always, I don't know, have a nice bath or read a book or whatever. But then yeah. we've always got a, a an half day or morning. Yeah. So um, so that is the routine, and I'm you know I'm trying to exercise every day, but I'm only doing it if I feel like it. I think that's. So, yeah. and I think there's so much pressure on people to do that. A hundred percent. I think that should apply to everything. Mm. Um, can I ask uh, any books, films, anything, anything you've enjoyed that's helped you through it, either about this, about feminism, uh, just complete escapism, anything you've all you've you've been you've read or watched or listened to. Um, I have narcissistically watched two series because I'm in them briefly The Trouble with Maggie Cole on ITV which nice. I play an absolute tool in a grade A weapon and that was fun um, and that's sort of on Wednesday nights on ITV I've watched a series called Trigonometry um, that I was in for about 10 seconds on iPlayer which um, is about a thruple which grew, grew and grew on me I really liked it um, I am a uh, I'm, I've watched the first series of Shrill, which I love. That's very good. Ah. And I'll be honest, and this might get me some hate, I didn't love the book. Um, mm. but it's a really brilliant sitcom. It's American. Lolly Adafope's in it. It's yes. Brilliant. And there's I, two series of it straight off the bat on iPlayer. So, I yeah. might watch some episodes of that tonight, actually, because we're a bit yeah. behind. We've, 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 uh, we, are, we started season two, and then... I can't remember what happened. Something disrupted it. I think it was a global pandemic and we never got back to it. And, uh... <laughs> um, and books, I'm about three quarters of the way through um, Jen Brister's The Other Mother. Oh, I can't wait to read so that. So funny. Yeah. I must get Jen um, in there. Really, really funny and really fascinating. And um, I recently read a brilliant, if you're after some non-fiction, a brilliant book called Home Fire mm. um, uh, by Camila Shamsi. That. I, I was totally engrossed in that, in like, unlike anything I've read for a while, actually, story. I need, I need an engrossing book so that I don't be distracted. I don't get distracted by my phone. So I'm going to get that one. I'm going to get it online. I might get an audio book. Um, any yeah. pets, costumes or eccentric relics you'd like to show us? So a little bit of like we're seeing into people's houses now. We've never done that before. Is there anything you'd yeah. like to show us? I haven't. Um, I've real One of the things I've learned... Uh, from this lo lockdown is that I don't, because I'm being asked quite a lot to do dressing up for things. I don't, um, 
someone who's asking where you can watch Thrill, it's on iPlayer. Um, if you're in the UK. In America, it'll be on something else. Um, I think it's I, on Netflix I, or Hulu. We watch oh, it on Netflix I, or Hulu. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, um, I don't have much dressing up stuff, but I've bought some things to show you that are sort of poignant, pertinent. This is a horrible necklace that my son made me for Mother's Day. Nice. Um, and on Mother's Day, he, I think, very rightly said, can I just say, I'm really sorry, Mummy, that doesn't look like a heart. It actually looks like a pig's nose. <laughs> does um and then also i bought um my girlfriend's jumper because um i've been allowing myself one deep deep sniff of it a day it's a very nice jumper i don't want to handle it too much i don't want to I start wish it. you and steph were together for this because it's it or, or i mean although it's a lot of pressure on any relationship isn't it but mm -hmm. i i I'd, I'd i'd love it if you were together and then i could we, we can house party and then you are together yeah let's do yeah. that Dom house party yet? Yeah. Yeah, she maybe she's here. Um, can you tell us a dark thought or low moment you've had? This is the most popular question in the whole show. Every time, have you had a what, real popular to answer? Popular question to answer? Yeah, or... no, popular with the with the with the with the viewers. The viewers love this, love the answer question. And I think it's cause only because everyone's live streaming their best moments. Everyone's live streaming themselves dancing yeah. around the kitchen. They go on house party with a margarita. They get dressed up and people who are having these crashingly low moments feel completely disconnected from the fact that everybody is seems to be indulging in all this sort of joy you don't have to tell us anything no i mean i i feel like i've been pretty honest from the off like i don't have there's nothing that there's not been one that particularly sort of stands out i would say every every day i cry at some point and it, it always blindsides me. And it's not always the necessary cries. I'd say that's probably the darkest thing about it in the sense mm. that, so today I was in a horrible, horrible place for probably three or four hours. Um, and I knew there was a cry that needed to come and I, I can feel it rise up from my belly. Mm. I can feel it sit there for a bit. And then it sat there, Debs, but I just had too much to do and I never got it out. And in the end, you know, the fog cleared, Anyway, I just, I, I managed to get my head into some bit of work I needed to do and I, I moved my body in a way that I enjoyed in the garden. I, I, you know, and the fog cleared anyway. The, the one time where it was like a cartoon was, um, I, had a, a, I had some spare milk. I was taking a full brand new pint of milk um, uh, round to my ex is where my kid was and I literally spilt milk. I spilled that. I, just before I got to the door, I spaffed it all over the floor, and it just a whole pint of milk. There's about that much left in the bottom. All went, and I blubbed about it. I literally cried about spilt milk. You were the second person to have cried about spilt milk in this quarantine. Alison oh, Spittle also. Yeah. Also, oh, everyone's saying, "Well, bake with your kids, bake with your kids." But equally, like if you, <laughs> the jeopardy of losing an egg if you actually let a four. Oh my god! I know. Genuinely what? take part uh, when it's your last egg. You're not. It's, you can't really let them. Can't really, you can't really, you've got to really not let them near the last egg. No, you cannot let them near the last egg. The last egg. Your video about making slime on your Instagram, everyone's going to go look at it. I don't want to give it away, but it made me laugh so much. And I sent it to every parent I know, and they were all oh. hysterical. So if you go to if you if you if you go to Jess's um, Instagram feed, not her stories, you'll see a little video of her, and I think the hashtag is like Mum of the Year, and it's just it's very short. Uh, and very, very funny. Um, what Have you got a piece of online feminism we could help with today? Something we could do to give our day purpose and meaning as we are not allowed to interact with other human beings? Uh, well, I think if you've got any spare dosh, stick it, stick it in the Trussell Trust and keep people from hunger. Um, and then other than that, you know, I think it, it, if you've I think sharing and helping, it sounds awful, but it makes you feel amazing. Mm. So even if you've, all, all you're able to do because of where you live or your situation or whatever is offer, you know, mm. um, it, it, and it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be someone who's able to physically leave the house. You can offer yourself up for phone calls to um, Age UK. There's, there, there, are, there are various if you spend some time Googling, there are various ways you can find out you can give your company to people over the phone, even. Mm. 
Um, uh, so I think, that's I a think great idea. Finding ways, uh, and actually the, the NHS volunteers, I know they're, they're inundated, but I think you, you can find ways of, um, of feeling useful. Yeah. I agree. And I think if you, if we'll, we'll make it, we make a story every day of uh, the piece of online feminism that the guests would like us to engage with. And we're doing that today. Uh, if you can't donate because you're really genuinely very, very close to the wire and worried about money, that's absolutely fine. But if you could amplify, because if you tweet about it, you probably have followers that are, you know, have got very stable jobs. They're just working from mm. home and they might go, oh, I'd like to do something purposeful today. I've spent eight yeah. hours making a deal. And they might give. So if don't worry about if you can't give, but amplify. And even Sarah Pascoe was saying, even if you follow them, mm. that makes them feel seen because they're all trying to do this difficult thing from home. And I think, oh my God, we got, you know, after this, if everyone watching it, we've got two, you know, 300 people live watching it. We'll probably get 4,000 people watching it over the next 24 hours. If even, you know, a tenth of those people followed, what a lovely lot of new followers for trust or trust feeling and you could just retweet them sometimes so yeah. uh, try and get involved because you know i think it's really easy to sit and think about ourselves and there's always somebody else who needs you and you doing something for them is going to make you feel so much better there's there was lots of people on this saying oh, they cry every day and they're crying now and they're crying you know uh, I, uh, I, if someone says here i know crying but i do lock myself away every day for a few hours i mean we are mm. all just coping with this whole new world and our whole system is is doing this um i'm learning to do body rolls in my fitness dance class so that's why i now everything's a body roll jess what's um, a body roll is that like a worm no it's like sort of like you know no you're standing up sort of like a hip-hop sort of body roll i'm learning to do in my dance fitness class because like, that's... did you just do an upper body bit of it then for me Debs? i did i did a little bit but honestly is it like that it's very like that. Honestly, honestly, I do not yet have the confidence to do it in front of anyone but Melissa. I mean, I'm doing for fitness. It sort of gets me out of bed. If I've got a video call with her, I will get out of bed and do something and then I'll get dressed and then I'll have a shower. I cannot promise you that without Melissa waiting for me, I would be up yet. I do my um, weights in the garden and I can hear some neighbours giggling. I can't see them, but I can hear them giggling. Ooh. They, well, I, I'm afraid. To be honest, Debs, I haven't been able to do a live gig for so long that um, any laughter I can create live, <laughs> I will take at this point. Uh, uh, I did think last night that, that uh, I thought of all the doctors, you know, it's a sort of famous thing that doctors stop doctoring and become comics, become mm. comedians. And I did think a lot of them would be regretting that now with that 10 minute standing ovation all the doctors got last night. Yeah. <laughs> that we're sitting in, can't do any gigs. Can you imagine how furious you'd be? Yeah. Um, can I ask what do you hope humanity will learn from this if anything um, I hope that we are, though, so I hope that we'll learn that the individualism or even nationalism that has become really popular across the whole globe recently um, doesn't work mm -hmm. and that actually we all need mm -hmm. each other, each other. Um, I hope that the dismantling of the NHS and actually of the BBC that was fully underway under Boris is no longer to be stood for by anyone, mm -hmm. even the people who proudly voted for him. Um, and um, I hope that we don't, it's a hope, but it's not a realistic hope, I don't think, that we don't immediately repollute all the bits of environment that are having mm -hmm. a holiday while the economy and industry is off. A uh, truly wonderful answer. And I feel a very, a very hopeful answer. And I, I agree with you that I think even if, I think no matter what now, um, even if the Tories... Uh, had huge plans to dismantle the NHS and the BBC, it would be so unpopular now. Yeah. But I think they're going to not be able to do that. Um, still, vote Labour, please. Um, also, on, I a, can't on, prove a, on, on a more specific level, I hope that we, um, maybe it, this would be the end of cruise holidays. <laughs> because um, they are cesspits. They are like infestation. They always have been. There's always been hand sanitizer all over them. Because if someone gets ill on there, everyone's scuppered. But also, they are so horrific for the environment and for the ports that they dock into. Mm -hmm. And also, I don't know if you've been on one, but dang, it's not a very nice place to be in terms of people and the way people behave and how horrible people are to people. And I didn't get on one once, and I'll never get over it. And um, I, it would be great if this meant that they 
that they sort of lost their dazzle. I did see your show, Silence of the Nans, which was very yeah. much about some people on a cruise ship yeah. who were not the greatest audience you'd ever had. No, um, no I agree. I agree. That, that's not a bad idea. And do you, ha can you see any habits in yourself or in the world, just the way the world's changed so rapidly that might stay with us? Because I, I, mean, I think like something like we might realize that half the meetings we do, we need to be in the room and the other half we could do on Zoom. Yeah. And it would slow our pace of life down. It would be better for the environment. Uh, you anything said in like your that. When you said um, in your text message a few days ago, when you said, for example, do you think like shaggy hair will become fashionable? And I thought, mm. excuse me, Debs, I've always had that. <laughs> You've so, always yes. been fashionable. Let's hope that that, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what habits. Um, I am so joyfully growing all my body hair from the from from there down mm. oh that's nice i wouldn't mind i wouldn't mind carrying on with that having hair removal holidays see i I'm, i am i like from, a smooth I am away from my love then i love mm. i know i see i do see that i like being smooth and it, and i just wonder what i'm going to be like <laughs> it's such a funny sentence then <laughs> I just like being smooth, like like an otter. I do. Um, I like being an otter, and I just wonder how I'll feel, how I'll be, how I'll manage you ever it. Tried and feeling like a wolf. I mean, I yeah, I'm gonna, I'm going, going to, I might go from otter to wolf, and I'm look, I might like it. I might enjoy it. Um, yes, you can be a sexy wolf. I don't know if you've seen Game of Thrones, but I'd get off with any of those wolves. I mean, we all would now because we're in quarantine. That's <laughs> so true. Oh, God. I'm not going to take that. My, the thoughts that I'm having any further, I'm going to keep them inside. Hashtag um, sexy wolf. Um, yeah. Every day, uh, we are, the, the lovely people from the merch store are making our t shirts to demand uh, based on whatever the, com something that something the comedian said. Um, and uh, then it, it, they only print them if people order them and then the money goes to the comedian. Um, so uh, maybe your T-shirt, uh, should Sex. people want to buy it, might be, I get, off, I get off with any of those wolves. Uh, Corona-19. Uh, hashtag Jessica Foster Q. I don't know. Which, which, sexy, wolf. Sexy, sexy wolf. Sexy Just wolf. Sex wolf. Sex wolf. Yeah, so, sex so people wolf. people agree... Like how... It's about how you feel when you've let your body hair grow from the larynx down. Sex wolf. Or your t-shirt could say, uh, you've got corona on your tuppence. Oh, yeah. I think you've got, I, I think I've seen some corona on your tuppence. It's quite a long, quite well, a lot. Up to you, Debs. Sex, sex wolf. Uh, look, and finally, where can we see you, follow you? Is there anything we should watch with you in other than the things you've already mentioned? Um, no, uh, yeah, the trouble with Maggie Cole on ITV, I, I really want that to get a second series, so can you mainly watch that? Um, so Lovely. Get to do a bit more of that, got series two of that. Um, it's got to on French in, you can't go wrong. Um, you, you, it would and, be hard pressed to go wrong. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, please may listen to my podcast, Hoovering, it's all about eating. I'm keeping that up. I'm talking to some fascinating people who are going to be very distracting, but also I'm making inroads about talking to some people who could actually maybe be really informative in terms of um, the, the practicalities of eating during this crisis. And also I think in terms of people's mental health, if they're perhaps have a history of disordered eating and stuff like that. I think I'm going to talk to some people who might be helpful on that front in terms of keeping your head and keeping on track and stuff. Um, but mainly I'll be talking to silly comedians to be distracting about things that they're eating. To. But yeah, that's, it comes out every Friday and it's called Hoovering and it's free. Fantastic. Listen to Hoovering. It's a genius show. Uh, Jessica Foster Q, you are a Guilty Feminist favourite. We'll be making Guilty Feminist shows from the bunker soon. Uh, we'd obviously love you to, cut, you to come and uh, and co-host one of those but you have to do it you have to record it in your own house while i'm recording okay. it in my house okay and then the guest is in another house we've never done yeah. it before but it'll be exciting it won't be the palladium i think we need to be clear it will be a very but it'll be of the moment yeah i'm, um, I'm, I'm excited um so lovely to have you on the new normal thank you so much thank for coming you. you've been absolutely wonderful oh someone here's put uh 
Are you a sex wolf or an otter? Should be the t-shirt slogan. That's nice, actually. That's yeah. quite good. That's, That's quite perfect. good. Somebody here says, Muddleback says, Jess, you're my favourite. Oh. Thanks, mate. Oh, my two favourite podcasts combined. This is great. We, this is the applause we don't get anymore. Just stay <laughs> on. People applauding. Look, hands applauding. Smiley oh. faces. Please do it hearts. People are like, really, we really need this. We really, really need this. Um, thank you both, says Lex Page. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. And uh, oh, uh, to, oh are you, you could go, Jess. You, you go and I'll, and I'll say Love the next thing. Love you, Jess. You. Bye. 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 Um, and just to let you know that next week on The New Normal, on Monday, we have May Martin. On Tuesday, we have Ellen Jones. On Wednesday, we have Kima Bob. And on Friday, we have Sindhu V. And Thursday, I'm not sure, but I think we have a marvellous guest. Uh, I just want to confirm with her first. Uh, but that will give you an idea for next week. And I will also go right now and make the story for the Trussell Trust um, with the swipe up function. Or you can just Google them. Um, thank you so much. You have been absolutely wonderful. Uh, please go to our Patreon, the Guilty Feminist Patreon. If you go to guiltyfeminist.com, it will lead you there. If you would like to, we've never asked for money before from our audience. We've only ever done ticket sales from our live shows. Um, we've never taken advertising before. Obviously, that model has to change now. Otherwise, we won't be able to pay any of our guests or co-hosts. We won't be able to pay uh, the, the women who work for us uh, at the back end uh, if we don't take any income and so we need to do that so if you could uh sign up for patreon we would absolutely love that um and if you would uh if you would like to do that um you will get free extra content not free because it's patreon it's not free you'll be paying for it uh but we will give you extra content videos behind the scenes stuff and there are other rewards there you can do it for as little as two pounds fifty a month um thank you for so much for doing this you say well thank you um Love you all. Uh, what time are you saying? What time? 6 p.m. GMT, Monday to Friday, every day next week. And the podcast comes out as normal. Uh, Monday GMT at noon. Uh, it's Friday night now, so I might actually go and have a drink. I normally work in the evenings. And do you know what? I'm just not going to. I just can't. I'm just not going to. I'm just going to go and have a drink. I'm just going to have, I'm just going to watch a movie or something. I'm going to turn my phone off. Uh, what does my T-shirt say? I think my, my T-shirt should say, I'm not good with technology. I'm good with people and people are gone. Because that's, that's what I shouted in the first couple of days when I was so distressed that I threw my phone across the room. But now I've got a new phone. Um, love you all. Bye.